Hi, welcome to Joanna's DIY Life. On this channel, I love to sew and make home decor on a budget. Today I'm going to be using this Dollar Tree fence that I fell in love with. It's new and I cannot wait till you see what I do with it. So let's get crafty. Okay, first of all, I've got this bunny and I've had it forever. Um, but you can use any bunny that you find. You can do this with anything. Um, to make a pattern all you have to do is I folded a piece of copy paper in half and then I laid my bunny on there and I traced around my bunny you know you have to do it way bigger so you have room for seam allowances but I just traced around and then made it come out like a dress so that when I you know put this on like I said I have seam allowance room and then I split the back but I didn't like her nose so I'm gluing a pom-pom on to make it stick out a little more and that that looks better so I'm going to put her to the side and then I'm going to work on the dress this is fabric that I got from the Dollar Tree and I am going to fold it in um, not in half but I'm going to fold it up some when I get it spread out and I'm going to cut my pattern on the shoulder sleeves on the seam You'll see what I'm doing after I get done fidgeting with the fabric. So because I don't have pins, I'm just going to take a pencil and I'm going to hold my pattern down tight and I'm just going to draw around it and then cut that out. But before I cut it, I have to go grab my pins to pin it together so that it doesn't move so now you see where i pinned it together because i didn't want it to go anywhere um but now i am going to glue this together um i'm going to cut the back to put my slit so i can slip it over the bunny instead of trying to stick its big old head through that little hole but um I'm not going to sew this. I'm just going to glue it because it's not going to be worn, washed, or anything like that. So just regular Gorilla Hot Glue is what I'm using. Um, I'm going to iron all of the sleeves up and the bottom just to make a hem. And then you'll see me glue that later. Why I did this like this, I have no idea. Um, I glue... I mean, I... Iron both arm sleeves and I should have just ironed the bottom while I was ironing but I saw that gap so I am going to take and I didn't want it to fray or anything so I'm just going to find a small piece of lace I thought I was going to use that one but I didn't like it this is my scrap lace jar um, so there's no telling what I'll find in there but I did find a small piece that I thought would um be cute around the neck so I'm just gonna start at one edge and I'm gonna start applying a thin line of hot glue and I'm gonna carefully place my lace on there and push it down um, if you have something to push it with you can use that I just used my um, my tough little fingers there but um, I just put this lace all the way around and then cut it off when I'm done On the corners here, you'll see me where I fold it, I hold it, and then I fold it over to make it where it's not, um, you know, so bunchy there. But anyways, now that I've got that glued down, I'm going to go around the rest of my uh, hems there, and I'm just going to iron them all up just a little piece, and then I'll glue that. Okay, so there it is, all ironed. Up the way it should be and I'm going to remove my little ironing board thing and I'm just going to take a bead of hot glue and I'm going to carefully run a small amount down the lines or down the edges and then fold the edge that I ironed back up and stick it down and this will be a 
um, hem around all of the little dress, the bottom and the sleeves. Now where you have to fold it over in the back, I just want to um, fold it in and then I'm going to iron this and I'm going to create a little, um, you know, kind of like a hem where you don't see no unfinished edges when I glue it together. So it's just the same process, fold it over, iron it, glue it down, and then this will be on the top of the other when I fold it over and put it on the bunny. You'll see just in a minute what I'm talking about. Um, but before I do that, I am going to, I didn't know how big that the sleeves were going to be on the bunny. And so I just took a piece of um, heavy thread and I'm going to just, just slip stitch it across the top of each one of the sleeves and cut it off. So that when I put it around the bunny, I can kind of tie it. But this um, was not needed the way I cut the pattern. But I, like I said, I didn't know it at the time, so I just did it as a precaution. So I'm just going to do that on both sleeves and leave room. I didn't. You'll see me take it out in a minute, a stitch on each side. But leave room where you have to put glue to glue these pieces together. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this is where I pull out my string because I forgot that, you know, I was gluing. I went too far on the edge of the arm. But anyway, you're just going to put your right sides together and put a thin line around the outside, just as if you were, you know, putting stitching down. You're just gluing the seams shut and you want to make sure that you push it and smush it down into the fibers. Okay. And you're going to do this all the way around and seal your dress together. When you get it all glued and you don't think it's going to come apart, you know, you want to make sure your glue is a little cool or cold, then you're going to flip it the right side um, that it's supposed to be. And it will pucker at the arms because I didn't slit, um, you know, the arms or anything like that. But I'm just putting it on this rabbit, so I really don't care. It doesn't matter. It goes on there either way. So now I'm just going to slip it over the bunny, um, putting the arms in first. And see, I got mine a little snug. I really didn't need to tie it if I didn't want to. Um, it went on just fine. But since my string was already through it, I just went ahead and tied it. But on the back, I'm just going to take the piece that I ironed. And I'm going to fold it over. And I'm just going to glue that down. And make sure that the dress is all together. You know, just like that. That's easy, easy, easy. Now, both arm sleeves are tied and cut, and I'm just going to take a piece of leftover fabric, and I'm going to tie a little headband thing around her ears and around her head, and I'm just going to tie it in a knot, and then fluff my little bow edges or, you know, rag pieces or whatever you want to call it out, and make it look real cute. You can add... Um, a regular bow to this if you want to you could put flowers up there you know glue little bitty flowers you know whatever you want to do it's your bunny um, you can leave it plain if you want to like I said it's yours do what you want this is just for your inspiration and this is the way I wanted mine so there you have it and I know I was gonna show you a fence video and don't get offended it's coming it's just this goes with it okay so for this one I have 12 regular Jenga blocks and four of the tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. I've had the big Jenga blocks. We got them at auction, but you can find them at Walmart still. Maybe the dollar store. I'm not sure. But I'm just gluing five together using the um, Dollar Tree super glue wood glue. I'm going to switch to tight bond because this makes a mess. 
But anyway, just gluing five and then five together again. Okay, I've got my five and my five glued together and I'm just going to take one set of five and I'm gonna run my glue, you see what I'm doing, and I'm just gonna set the other blocks um, on it. I spread the glue out a little bit and then I'm gonna smush these two together. You might be able to see where I'm going with this. I left the two Jenga blocks out and we're going to attach them in a minute. Now with this tight bond, um, mine is quick and thick and I get it at Lowe's. I got it online too at Amazon, but um, it doesn't take long before you can mess with it. Now it's not completely dry, but it's tacky and stuck and you can mess with it. So I'm just gonna take glue and add them to the bottom of this and I'm gonna smush one on the very end and center it up as best I can without pushing the back off. And this will help stabilize the back on there as well. And I'm gonna put one on each side. And these are gonna be arms. We are making a little chair or a bench or whatever you wanna call it. And um, like I said, I'm just making these to go with my fence because I wanted something a little extra to go with it. If you don't want to do this part, you do not have to do this. Um, you can just do the fence that I'm going to show. But anyways, I'm just going to set this over and let it dry. And I'm going to wipe off any excess glue that I see around it. Now that it is dry, I'm going to pull it over to the edge of my table. Let the back of the chair, so to speak, hang off. And I'm just going to take the wood glue and I'm going to glue my little jingas on four corners to make the legs and it will look like this and I love it it's so cute so far so good so now I'm going to take Waverly wax and I'm going to take a baby wipe and I'm going to stain it that's my favorite method to stain something so then it will look like this um, if you want to avoid the glue marks um, you can stain it before you glue it together but the rabbit just sits in there just like that and it's so stinking cute okay this is nostalgic for me <laughs> i had these bird houses when i first moved in my home that i am in now and i've been here about 18 or 19 years so these were done with scrapbooking stickers and you know, the colors of paint that was in then and so on and so forth. So I just found them and I'm going to redo them. So I cut the strings off because I don't want those on there. Well, let me say I cut one off. Um, then I realized that you can pull them. So I just got my needle nose pliers and pulled the strings out of the tops. And um, then I just ripped all of or scraped all of the scrapbook stickers off they are so old that they just popped off real easy. Now, after I got all them stickers off, I wanted to seal up my holes. So I just had spackling from the Dollar Tree and I have to push it in and kind of form it with my fingers as you see me doing. And I'm gonna put it on thick. So that way I'm gonna sand it off later, but I wanna make sure that it's in those holes. Then I am going to take um, several paints and I'm gonna sand these off real good and I'm gonna paint them and I want you to know they're painted now but this took me hours because I'm a perfectionist I had to get every crook and cranny just right but I love the outcome they are gorgeous now now the anticipated fence <laughs> here we go you're probably thinking through the whole video Where's the fence, lady? Where's the fence? Well, now, here's the fence. First thing I'm going to do to the fence is I'm going to take some sharp snippers, scissors, wire cutters, whatever you got that will work, and cut the bottom stakes off. These have got to be gone, okay? And then, as you can see at the top, I have two of their wooden, well, it's supposed to be wooden, it's press board, um little signs they always have at the Dollar Tree usually for every season you're gonna need two of those if you do this project um, but I'm just sanding that off a little bit and this you might not want to do but I'm taking a knife and I'm gonna stop the video so you don't have to see me 
do this, but I'm just trying to get it smooth. Okay, now that that's over, I took my cutters and I cut these things off. Trust me, you do not have to, nor do you want to do this. I split my fence. Um, I had to piece my fence back together. You'll see that later. But this was not necessary. I thought it was necessary. I didn't want them on there. But then I realized, what did it hurt? You know, I mean, just leave them, people. Just leave them, okay? But anyways, I got them off and made a mess. But I am going to fix my fence and I'll be right back. Okay, now... Here is the crack in the fence, but I was going to distress it with Waverly Wax and watch this. I left this in here on purpose because who does this? Look at that. I shook my Waverly Wax. I was FaceTiming my oldest and I was shaking the Waverly Wax, holding it by the handle. The lid came off. The bottle landed in my lap and hit my floor. You should see my floor. I am so glad at this point. This is one time I was glad I didn't have my um, laminate down because it was a mess. My floor has a big Waverly wax stain now. And I had to go take a shower. This was one of the big bottles of wax. And it bled through my skirt, through my shirt. It was all over my arms. I look like a chocolate bunny. So this is the right time of the year, y'all. But anyway, I had to stop, go take a shower, get all this off, clean up this mess, and then start again. This video took me literally forever. My husband has the flu, and I wasn't feeling the greatest at the time. Um, but we got this, y'all. We got this. So while this is rolling and I'm cleaning up, I just wanted you to know what i done because I don't show it. I cleaned up my mess. Look at me. Oh my God. I cleaned up my mess and then I took um, an off-white chalk paint. <laughs> I took an off-white chalk paint and I painted the whole fence, okay? I painted it all white. And now that you know how goofy I am, I distressed it with Waverly Wax after I got it painted white just lightly. Now I'm going to take my boards and I am going to cut them to size and I'm just using the inside as my guide because it has to fit inside these and I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to mark it and go to my miter box, my miter saw. It's over on another table and I'm not going to move the camera over there but I just used a miter box and a saw and cut them off where I needed them. So I had to have another one because I had to cut two ends because it wasn't enough on the one board. Now I'm going to take this craft paper because I don't want this paper showing. I don't know. It's just I'm, I was weirded out on this one. So I just took the craft paper and glued my blocks down to finish that off. And so nobody would see, you know, tis the season and all that stuff. So, yeah. Now that they are all glued down, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to squeegee it flat as I can with my little scraper here. And then I'm going to flip them back over and I'm going to take a knife after I cut these apart. And then I'm just going to go around the edges of each one to trim them up. Now that I have them all ready, I'm just going to take this glue, and this is like E6000. If I'm not mistaken, it's Beacon 505. Um, I'm not sure. But anyways, I just add some of that, and then I'm going to add hot glue where I don't have the other glue. You do not want to mix these, trust me. And then I'm just going to set these in, and I'm going to put the craft paper down to the bottom and the other at the top, the white part. And I'm just going to glue these in all the back so this can stand up. These worked perfect for this. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm going to take floral foam that I bought at the Dollar Tree and I am going to unwrap it and then I'm going to cut it, okay? I'm going to cut it in half and then cut it in half again. Now I'm just gonna take hot glue, and I actually need it more than that, but um, I'm just gonna glue my pieces down, and that is what I'm going to use to um, decorate my little fence with. But I will tell you, I got ahead of myself, and um, so you don't wanna do this. Okay, at first I started adding flowers, and don't they look good? But look at this dowel rod, y'all. I bought this dowel rod at Walmart. You can get them at Hobby Lobby or wherever. I forgot to attach my birdhouses to the dowel rods and put them in there first. So I have to rip all these beautiful flowers out. But however, if you want to do one without birdhouses, the flowers behind it like this are awesome and they're very, very pretty. So I'm going to rip all my flowers out and I'm going to take these sticks and I'm going to poke them down in this styrofoam. Then I'm going to dig it out with a knife or whatever you have to dig it out to get down to the wood to give your pole something to adhere to and then we'll glue it another way so hang on i'll be right back i'm going to cut the dowel rods i want one taller and then two shorter so i measure them out to cut them accordingly okay here are my dowel rods as you see they are cut and my birdhouses and i am using tight bond glue um, it works great y'all this project has been so bad I was going to give up and just say forget it but I couldn't because I I just had the outcome in my brain and knew what I was going to have when I got done so I kept going no matter how I felt no matter how stressful this was and how hard and backwards it was I kept going and I am so glad that I did but anyways, it was a struggle. Like, it was a struggle. I'm just being real with y'all, okay? So, I'm going to glue my houses on my poles. Don't forget to take your sticker off your pole. And then, I'm going to set them up and let them um, dry. I am trying to poke this down in my lace jar to get it to stand up until the house is, you know, dry. So, you want to do something to stand them up. This is my big old holes in these things. Um, I stained the poles using the uh, method of, you know, the rag. And then I got my holes in there. Now I'm just going to add a butt ton of hot glue in those holes. And I'm going to add my birdhouses straight as you can get them into those holes and hold them there for a minute until it glues down. I try to tack it here, but there's really nothing to adhere it to, so I'll fix that later. This thing is so big, it is gonna be up in the camera, focusing and all that jazz, and I apologize right now for all that mess. But anyways, now I've got this, this is like ribbon, but it's cotton, and I'm just going to glue this here where it cannot be seen very well. And I'm going to glue it to the pole as well. And then I'm going to pull it around tightly and glue it to the other side, hiding it as much as possible. And I just do this to all of my birdhouses. Now they're in there, okay? And I've got moss, and I am taking moss, and I am mushing moss down in behind that so that you can't see that green stuff this is what I got so far after I put my flowers back in I'm telling you it's big I should have went to my other table I'm taking this burlap and I didn't want to put so much moss on there 
So I took strips of burlap and I cut strips and I'm gluing them down to the back side on my floral foam to cover up the floral foam. Whew, this project. I'm glad the outcome was good. Oh, ain't it pretty? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm just going to take this moss and I am going to glue it on the outside um, on these birdhouses. I'm just going to take wads. Y'all don't want to shove too far because you'll shove it in there. And I just took glue and tacked it down. And I'm going to take scissors and trim it later. But I'm just putting wads of this in the birdhouses just to decorate the birdhouses a little bit. Um, I just thought it was cute, okay? I just thought it was cute. Now you're going to have a bird up in your face just for a second. But I found this bird in my stash of stuff. So I'm going to glue the bird to the fence. And I am once again, sorry about this view, but I'm fixing to show you the whole thing and what I did, okay? So here's the finished product, and you're probably thankful. But my little rabbit is to the side, and this is how it's going to be displayed. I put the bird up there. I put a welcome sign. You know, I got the grass in the houses, and I love this project so much. It is one of my favorites I have ever done. So if you like this video, you want to help my channel, give me a thumbs up, drop me a comment, subscribe to my channel, share my channel if you can, Ring that bell to be notified so you don't miss any of my goofy content. And remember, you are a blessing. Until next time, goodbye.